All right, this is Conver This is Dolores Cannon's first book. If you're interested in life after death, this is probably the best book. Any religious scholar, this book was renamed Between Death and Life. Uh, I'm unique. Uh, my grandfather, as a small child, I learned he was in a plane crash. He broke more bones in his body than Evil Knievel ever broke in one moment. He was in the hospital for years recuperating. He was what I would classify as a third level death. There's four levels. The first level is you die, and then they bring you back, and some people remember things. The second level is when you die, and you actually, your spirit comes out of your body and you can see yourself. The third level is when the spirit actually goes to heaven, goes through the tunnel, goes whatever, and it gets there, and then they kick you out. Oh, no, it's not your time. you got to go back. That was my grandfather. Then there's people like me and Daniel Brinkley. We go to heaven, and we spend some time there. This guy, Daniel Brinkley, was an amazing man. Not a great man, but he died. He was on the phone one day, talking during an electrical storm, and he was on the phone, and the lightning hit the pole, went down through the phone line, went through his head, and pretty much went through his body and grounded it. The, the nails that were in his heels were ejected into the floor. The man went, they tried to bring him back to life, resuscitate him, and they tried and tried and tried. They kept getting him back and then they just gave up on him. He laid on a gurney for, I think, a half hour with a sheet over his face. His brother-in-law was standing over the top of him after a half hour, and all of a sudden, seen the breath. He goes, hey! He's alive! Hurry! Somebody come! And then he came back and he wrote this. Stanion's called a lightning shaman. Many stories, very good book, very interesting. Me, I died. I was in a bike accident when I was 12. Right after the bike accident, I fell on my left face. I, this was covered in blood, a scab. It took months and months to heal. And as I stood there looking at my body, all of a sudden, a guardian angel's next to me wearing a brown pinstripe suit with a, like a handlebar mustache. He goes, ain't nothing you can do. Come on, we gotta go. Across the street and the tunnel of light that everybody talks about, when I got on it, it was more, the, more like an escalator. That's how I felt. I was on an escalator going to heaven. Uh, before I got on the escalator, I remember looking up at the sky. It was blue. The bluest blue that I have ever seen in my entire life. When I looked at the sun, all I felt was love, and I couldn't wait to get there. I got on the escalator. As I went up the escalator, like super, super fast, all of a sudden people would come up next to me on the escalator. Hey, how you doing? Everybody was nice. Hey, how you doing? When I got to heaven, they say that Peter's going to meet you. To me, it was a guy with a clipboard, and pretty much told me, hey, you got to stay here. You go to meeting. Stay right here. We'll come back and get you. Stood around, talked to a lot of people. Everybody wants to come talk to you. How you doing? How you doing? Everybody wants to be your friend. And then all of a sudden, the guy with the clipboard came. He said, all right, come on, you got to go. Stuck me in a room. He said, here, sit on this couch. The couch was like an oversized, softest leather couch I ever sat in in my life. The longer I sat in, the more uncomfortable I got. I sat there for as long as I possibly could. I got off and then sat on like a planter or something. And then shortly thereafter, they came back. No, 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 can't, you got to go back on the couch. I said, well, it's, I know it's comfortable, but it's very uncomfortable being there. Don't worry, just get back on the couch. So then two people come in the room, one from this door, one from this door. They have a little talk with me. The one guy leaves. The other guy takes me outside, has a little talk with me again. And then I go back to the guy with the clipboard. All right, you're going back. Now all of a sudden, all those people that were nice to me and talking to me, no one wanted to talk to me anymore. It was like I had the plague. No one would look at me, no one would come near me. And, you know, I eventually, one guy that I had a longer conversation was walking past me. I was like, well, what's going on? Nobody wants to talk to me. What do I, well, well, did I do something wrong? No, no, you're, you're back on the path. You're going back to your body. And shortly thereafter, I woke up in the hospital and the second I woke up, there was nobody in the room, and I'm like yelling, 
and eventually somebody comes in the room, one of the nurses, oh, you're out. I was like, yeah. So all of a sudden they bring me a wheelchair and the doctor and the nurse are wheeling me down to hook me up to some machine and they're both joking with me going, yeah, house, the lights were on but nobody was home. I'm like, well, what do you mean by that? He goes, your heart was beating, you were breathing when we hooked you up to the machine to see if you had any brain wave, you were brain dead. I was like, really? I was like, oh, all right. Any questions? It's wild. It's wild. <laughs> and uh, any fourth level, uh, like Dan and me, there's a lot of other people that are fourth level death persons. No one has ever explained it like this before, but because I've been studying it my entire life, I was able to classify certain things. I got a girl that she died in a car accident, died twice, and she never seen her body, but she remembers everybody that came into the room to talk to her. She goes, oh, I was dead, I was out, but I remember everybody. I, in the order that they came, too. I was like, oh, that's amazing. So, Jim, the uniquenesses that occur in your life that you and I have spoken about, did they occur after this near-death experience? Or did you have them beforehand? No, actually, after I was killed, some of my gifts were taken away from me. Like, my sensory gifts or things that I know. Like, a lot of times, I know what is going to happen before it happens. That's why on 9-11, I got off of Flight 93. Two weeks before, I had a dream, and they were talking about it. I got off it. Uh, before these... Uh, the train bombing in Spain the night before, or the day before, I called Dolores. I said, oh, I don't know what's going to happen, but they're going to attack again tomorrow. And it happened. You know, I took Dolores Cannon to the World Trade Center before it went down. Actually, we were going someplace else. And I says, oh, uh, nah, we're not going to go here. I want to take you to the World Trade Center. She goes, why? I was like, yeah, when I was a little kid, I told a bunch of people that this is going to fall down and it's about to fall down, so I wanted to take you there. Anyone that has ever been to Dolores Cannon's office, they have seen the picture of me and Dolores at the top of the World Trade Center in front of the eight-foot picture that they have. I'm wearing a black leather jacket, I'm hanging out like this, and she's there all happy, smiling. And I just, we went to the top, and I was like, Dolores, I don't know which one's falling first. I says, but these are coming down. Aren't you afraid? Why? It wasn't coming down today, the night, the day we were there. Where were you on the trade center? You were at the top? Yeah, we were at the very top of the trade the center. Restaurant, right? No, on the observation deck. One of the, one of the buildings had an observation deck. I've been at, I was at Windows of the World, and I was, I'm deathly afraid of heights. I was better on the observation deck than I was at the Windows of the World, because the Windows of the World, you can go right to the edge and look down. And that's when I get this feeling in my stomach and this feeling going down my spine. You know, so we hung out a couple hours on top of the observation deck and we talked. All right. What's that now? You're going to wind up now, right?